Hi, welcome to another edition of Linear Algebra. We are still uh, continuing on the section with uh, applications. Uh, going to have some final remarks about uh, uh, electrical networks. So let's go put some final touches on this topic before we move on to the next. So uh, among the topics that we have covered so far, we spent most of the time on the uh, basic electrical networks and Kirchhoff's laws and uh, today I'm gonna have a short uh, lecture on continuation of that topic so uh, let's go down here uh, we um, had an example last time about Wheatstone bridge circuit so it's a famous uh, example. You're going to see it in your uh, circuit classes. So we did some of the basic works and explain how it connects to linear algebra. Uh, one of the topics that shows up in some of the homework problem is the so-called uh, equivalent resistance. The concept of equivalent resistance is uh, sometimes you have a complicated circuit it's attached to uh, some battery and the question would be how can I simplify this whole picture meaning uh, if I want to remove all of these uh, resistors here and just replace them with just one item one resistor what should be the resistance of that resistor so that it will be an equivalent circuit what do you mean by equivalent equivalent means if the uh, voltage of the battery is the same what should be the resistance here so that the current will be the same well, what does that mean well in this problem we went out and find out that uh, in the setting if this is 10 volts then the current here will be uh, we found out last time it is 7 amps so the question would be what should I replace all of this thing with so that the current is still 7 amps so let's go ahead and uh, define what this topic is uh, equivalent resistance so in the example above we had a 10 volt coming and uh, this uh, current was 7 amp and then we had some uh, complicated circuit there let me just quickly draw something and then now we want to take all of this and replace it by just one resistor so that I'll have uh, same setup down here there's just one resistor here so this is uh, what we call uh, effective resistance or so sometimes called effective so let's call this thing R effective uh, or equivalent resistance so this is still 10 this is still 7 and Ohm's law tells us that uh, well, Ohm's law tells us that uh, V is equal to Ri. So V is still 10. R is the equivalent resistance I'm trying to find. And the current is supposed to stay the same. If this is doing the same job that that uh, whole set of resistors were doing, if it is equivalent, the current has to be the same. So out of this, uh, we find out that uh, uh, effective or equivalent resistance is 10, 7 and the unit we said is ohms so uh, you are going to see uh, some uh, homework problems perhaps here perhaps in your other classes if I have a resistant a resistor attached to another one in a so-called series style so you have one resistor here another resistor here and the question is what's the equivalent uh, to this set of resistors and it turns out to be or just uh, some of them and then the, the second style of this thing uh, if you have the so-called parallel style of resistors and you want to find out so if this is R1 this is R2 
and you are connecting these endpoints to uh, say battery and you want to figure out what the equivalent resistor is going to be so in this case uh, we have uh, the following uh, uh, law and in the in the case of the parallel resistance it turns out we have this uh, peculiar uh, looking uh, formula for the equivalent resistance of that case i'll uh, leave these two problems to you to figure out where do these two pro uh, where do these two formulas coming from and you are going to see them uh, in uh, problem 22 if you want to do something extra problem 22 of your textbook is uh, talking about this and as i said uh, many times if you are taking a course in uh, electrical circuits you're definitely going to see this now uh, before we leave this topic uh, let's just summarize what we said in terms of uh, Kirchhoff's laws Kirchhoff's laws a bit more complicated than uh, plain uh, Ohm's law uh, due to the fact uh, that the signs are a little bit uh, uh, more complicated to deal with so Kirchhoff's laws uh, so we have uh, only dealt with uh, resistors and the batteries in our uh, uh, problems so uh, this is how we uh, uh, had a resistor showing up in um, our problems suppose uh, the two endpoints of it is A and B so we go ahead and if we know what the direction is well we use it if we don't know we just use any direction and at the end of the problem if that uh, current turns out to be negative it means, simply means our uh, true conventional direction in the opposite direction of this thing so suppose uh, uh, one way or another we have set the direction of the current to be this way and then for writing the Kirchhoff's law the, the, the voltage law uh, we always go ahead and consider a, a loop so suppose my loop goes in this direction so the, the loop there's a rest of this uh, circuit and uh, you draw a loop and then you're supposed to start from some point and go along the uh, loop direction until you come back to that same point so in this case uh, what is the voltage change uh, voltage uh, change uh, going from A to B so I'm going A to B and the conventional flow presumably is in the same direction as my uh, the direction of traveling in the loop so in that case our voltage drops uh, our voltage change is going to be minus whatever the resistance here is R times whatever the current happens to be would be Ri okay now well what if you were traveling in the loop in the opposite direction so suppose again I have exact same setup so I'm going from A to B and this is the current and uh, the resistance is R but somehow I've decided to loop the other way so the, the, these two are in opposite direction I'm still gonna uh, travel uh, I'm gonna travel from B to A so, so we are gonna travel in the direction of the chosen direction of the loop so and now I'm going from B to A so I say voltage uh, change going from B to A is plus Ri so if you're going with the flow you're losing potential and you write it at minus Ri if you're going it's like going upstairs if you're going in this direction your gaining potential is plus ri so uh, we have covered both of these now uh, similarly 
let me draw a line here so what if I have a, a battery for battery if I am going So you remember battery has two poles the negative is the shorter line the positive is the uh, the longer line if I am and uh, suppose the voltage of this battery is V and again we are going from A to B and uh, here is how I am looping in my uh, circuit I, and I'm going from <coughs> the negative side of this thing to the positive as I loop around so now a voltage change as we go from A to B is we are gaining plus V volt <coughs> If I have exact same setup, but uh, I have decided to loop the other way, so it's still A and B, this is the same battery, uh, voltage change as we go from B to A. minus V okay so we choose a, a loop so here we had a, here uh, you can choose your loop any which way you want it doesn't matter and uh, also the currents if you don't know which way it's gonna go like in the Wheatstone bridge we don't know how, what this middle one is gonna do you just choose some direction and then you write your equation you write the Kirchhoff's law and if your current turns out to be negative it simply means you had to go uh, the conventional current is in the opposite direction okay so this is the Kirchhoff's uh, law the, the, the more complicated one the easier one the note law the note law simply says if you have a current coming at the fork and is splitting into uh, two other currents it simply said the incoming so let's call this thing uh, I1 say as the incoming and I2 and I3 as the outgoing so we had uh, simply stated it's uh, incoming uh, or the sum of incoming is equal to the sum of outgoing that's not a uh, uh, major uh, uh, difficulty here but sometimes it's stated as the algebraic sum of all the incoming currents is zero so the equivalent version of this thing is algebraic when they say algebraic sum it's, uh, it's a shorthand for saying you have some pluses and some minuses in your summation so that's why they call it algebraic sum of uh, say all all incoming currents to a node is zero first it sounds a bit odd so the, this is the only incoming uh, current here what do you mean the sum is zero so obviously that's not zero what they mean by this is that if this is incoming to this node let's call it I1 on this wire the incoming to the same node is minus I2 so when you are saying outgoing is I2 it's the same as saying incoming is minus I2 and same same here uh, outgoing I3 simply means incoming is minus I3 but now we have three so-called incoming currents and this version of Kirchhoff's law says the sum of all of them is equal to zero the algebraic sum so if we have I1 is one of them minus I2 is the other one and minus I3 is the other one the sum of them 
is zero which of course when you write it without all that uh, uh, crowd of parentheses it becomes this and when you look at that well that is uh, incoming was i1 and outgoing was i2 plus i3 okay so the note law of uh, Kirchhoff's law it's uh, simple uh, sometimes the way they phrase it you have to be careful how you interpret it and how you write it down okay I guess uh, we are going to leave the rest of this topic and uh, uh, more advanced issues uh, to your uh, classes of course the circuits are not just made out of wires and uh, resistors and batteries lots of other components uh, that's what the modern electronics builds on and then you are going to deal with them and especially alternating currents in your advanced classes uh, what we meant to say is when you have scientific concepts you want to quantify them more often than not you end up with the linear systems in fact you are lucky if that's that's all you end up with the linear system non-linear would have meant something a uh, lot more complicated but typically uh, complicated also means interesting so at the beginning we learn the linear systems and then we go with that now you notice that uh, we looked at very simple circuits and that's just a few resistance here and uh, this is still very simple of course any electronics you open any motherboard you look at there are a lot of thousands of lines and uh, that means the uh, the linear system that goes with it is a lot more much bigger than this if it is linear it's much bigger than this and uh, that's what we are going to do in the future uh, lectures we are going to go start looking at uh, this topic on a more uh, fundamental level look at the matrices and how to handle matrices and uh, what are the operations with matrices you remember at the very beginning of the semester we said our long-term plan is to learn how to manipulate matrices just like how we learn to manipulate numbers since primary school so for the last 12 years you have been dealing with just numbers now you are going to learn how to do exact same set of things but with matrices and uh, well we expect some complication and we need to be uh, confident about our uh, activities when these matrices uh, become large matrices we want to make sure that uh, we understand what they're doing and what our computers are doing with them that is what we are going to be taking up uh, shortly okay until that lecture good luck and god bless